god damn does Demon Slayer get me excited. This episode, combined with episode 19, this is what shonen battle anime should aim to be. Something that has consequences, that your main character isn't just gonna be the OP bastard who will get the job done. But it doesn't mean you can't have him be a badass, but it also shows you that your main character still has so much further to go before he's ready to take on one of the Twelves by himself. The fact that one of the lowest ranked Twelve Moons almost killed him even after Nezuko landed that surprise attack that allowed him to come in and deliver such a badass blow it still wasn't enough because the demon cut off his own head, making it so his blade wasn't the damage that would have killed him. Last week I mentioned it. I was kind of torn. Did I want to see Tanjiro be able to basically outbeat this powerful demon, or did I want him to have to be saved? And I thought last week he killed him because look at the cliffhanger that we got. It appeared like the demon was dead. And I was perfectly okay with that because I felt like there was a believable reason to how he would have an attack to be able to defeat him, but also that surprise attack from Nezuko played an incredibly huge factor. But the fact that they went the route of not only giving us something that felt so badass and be like, yes, we wanted to see Tanjiro in this situation. They also showed us that our main character, look at how damaged he is. Look at how close to death he was. He's not ready for the 12 moons yet. He has so much further to go. And the fact that he did have to get rescued, I think is actually something that it plays to both sides and makes for such a satisfying conclusion to such a brilliant arc overall. Demon Slayer knows how to use the tropes that have kind of given many successful classic shonens the edge in popularity that they have, but they know how to not just rely on those and do something creative. The fact of the matter is we know how demons operate. Unless you kill them with one of the special blades, even if you rip their head off, they're just going to regrow. So the fact that he actually cut his own head off so the blade wouldn't do the finishing blow is incredibly creative and something that works with the world mechanics. And it also doesn't take away from the fact that Tanjiro did something that was incredibly badass and hell, Nezuko was even able to mirror the blood arts that she was witnessing from other demons. It still gives you that badass feeling like, yes, our main characters did something so creative and it doesn't take away from it. The fact that they survived this long going up against someone they weren't ready to fight shows just how far Tanjiro and his sister have come but it also proves that this isn't a series where the main character will always win. They will lose and if they don't have the proper backup they will die. It actually gives you consequences. Look at their bodies. Look at how far they were pushed their back against the wall and it wasn't until you had the true demon hunters some of the top ranked fighters come in to take out the remaining forces it's not like they had to get saved and everything was done for them they did a hell of a lot if it wasn't for them who knows what would have happened but i love the idea that they weren't good enough to finish the top ranking people and that was actually incredibly interesting and a really smart move overall and shows that demon slayer isn't one of those anime that people are gonna try to criticize as oh the main character always wins, he always has the power to do so. No, our main character doesn't always win, and as we see with this battle, he came how close to death at how many points? And yes, his love for his sister did fuel him enough to keep going, but it's not like he got some random power up and kind of crushed the world under one pinky. No, he incredibly struggled and just was tortured, and I love the consequence to this battle overall. We basically get the confirmation about the whole playing house, why he did this. He didn't actually know what he was as a human, and he figured that if he had a family, maybe those memories would come back to him. Something I've been complimenting since the very first demon who hinted at having a humanity to him, basically having something from his past that kind of made you kind of feel sympathy. It didn't mean you want to forgive the demon. The demon's bad, but the person inside that demon, they didn't ask to be this. And I do appreciate the fact that we did get a pretty good amount of content surrounding that whole backstory and what ultimately led this family to operate in the way that it did. And I wasn't actually expecting that the last demon other than him to actually be supporting the whole playing house family. I thought that was actually an interesting twist. I thought it would have been like the mother begging for death when a demon slayer comes up to her and says, hey, it's time to die. But the fact that some of these people truly bought into the idea of this fake artificial family, some just kind of followed in suit because... If they ran away, they would get killed, and two, he is the one who saved them, so they just kind of play along. And then there's others who truly bought into this fake artificial family, and in some ways you kind of believe maybe they were family in that way, just in a really demonic sense. Because at the end of the day, it's a demon, they're cursed, they're vile, but a lot of the things they do, they have elements of humanity tied to them because there is still that person living deep down inside. It's just like a wild beast kind of smelling blood, you can't stop them from their natural urges. And it's so interesting seeing, especially seeing the betrayal of what she did when it said like hey let's run away he's gonna be gone and then she betrays him because 
she truly believed in her brother. And I thought that was just so interesting to see how twisted and warped that whole family dynamic was. But at the end of the day, it almost felt to like he almost did have what he was searching for, but he pushed back against it so much and hurt anyone who opposed him that he missed the core essence of what a family is. And that's they won't always agree. And I thought that was so interesting and tragic and really gave you that sense of humanity to once again show you that this could be Nezuko. This could be someone who will eat a person, who will lose herself, and a demon hunter will have to kill her and do the same. It's interesting how they give you that sense of humanity without making the viewer or someone like Tanjiro say we can't kill them. No, they have to be killed, and depending on the hunter, someone like Tanjiro is going to mourn for them, and someone like Shinobu is going to torture them. And I think that's what's really interesting about the concept of the demon hunters and the demons themselves, is that there's traces of humanity throw every single person, whether it be a demonic beast or the demon hunters or random civilians, and I think it really shows the writing capabilities to the show overall. But I have to say, when it came to Shinobu, I just found my new favorite character. I'm already terrified of her and respect her all wrapped up into one beautiful package. There is something so bone chilling and adorable about her voice actor. To be able to have every single line that she speaks sound a adorable, comforting, as if it's a big sister, right? She's there to comfort you. But then when the music kicks in, and the way she slowly, but very noticeably, fluctuates her voice and just mannerisms with how she speaks, she sounds like the most creepy witch we've ever seen. And that level of voice acting is what truly sold me on being so, I was like admiring this girl. It's like, holy shit, she is badass. But I am also terrified thinking, well, I mean, it's a demon, but do we really got to torture him? Even if the girl did kill 80 humans, I mean, it's a demon. You can't really blame a demon for doing their natural instincts. We kill them so they don't continue it. Maybe we don't have to take pleasure in this and maybe you can find another friend. And I love that contrast and the idea that she isn't strong enough to be head. So she relies on poison and just this girl. I just love the idea of this is what Tanjiro could become in terms of power. And this is why I think it's so important that he didn't beat the 12 demon to show us that even the badass things we've seen, he's not ready to do this alone and he has a long way to go. And to see the difference between her as well as the other one, I forget his name, it's like Gyu or something like that. I just love the difference in status and power and how they are proud of what they were able to do, but they weren't ready for something like this. And I don't think anyone really expected them to. And to just see the brilliance, the badassery, the absolute horror show of this girl, I can't wait to see more of her. I don't know how much more we'll get in the first season with the remaining six episodes but season two i hope we get more of her because holy shit she may not be a main crew member but when she comes up you know she's gonna make you shit in your pants and also feel so just in awe of what she's doing and that was completely badass and then when you get on the other side of the battle i just love the idea that this could be Tanjiro. This really will be Tanjiro. The idea of this 11th form water breathing, it's just silent, standstill, almost like you don't see what's happening. The threads are getting cut, and then he just slowly walks by and cuts off his head. The difference in power is ridiculous. The idea that you could see Tanjiro doing this someday, something maybe not exactly like this, but the idea that he is so powerful that you can't even predict his movements. They're so fast, they're so fluid and powerful, you can't see what's happening. That is absolutely ridiculous, and I think it was incredibly important. I'm sure some people are going to say, well, I wish Tanjiro really did have the finishing blow, but I think if he had that, we would feel a lot more comfortable with Tanjiro going up against other powerful demons in the future. Like, okay, he struggled here, but at least he's ready to fight these powerful beasts. No, he's not ready. And I think that's the importance of the story, is that he still has a far way to go, and the fact that he does have to rely on people like this, get trained by people like this, or just really take on some of the smaller cases first before taking up on the bigger demons, unless he absolutely has to fight them because they jump him or something like that. And to just see the difference in power, the poison, the swiftness, to then just the idea of water breathing that you can't even see what it's doing. You just see silent, just standstill water, puddles, and just beautiful imagery. I just can't wait to see how our characters, Sensu, Inosuke, Tanjiro, what their abilities would be like if they reached this level that we're seeing with these two hunters. And that's what's exciting. It has that badassery, that classic, like, we're cheering because we see badass shonen things. But at the same time, it feels like it's so well written that they're not ready to be this yet. And honestly, in a lot of authors' hands, that's where they would be at. Tanjiro would have done the crazy water breathing that we've seen here. 
or we'd have a character do some sort of butterfly technique and even though Tanjiro had that badass flames and Nezuko did that combo it wasn't enough and that wasn't enough is what really sold this battle to me I was ready to episode 19 he's dead I'm rooting for him I'm cheering and episode 20 immediately we're like oh shit that was badass but that wasn't enough. And I knew he wasn't going to die, but the fact that they made us watch someone who we really think has grown so much, and he has, and feel like he's still at the bottom, and what he's aiming for is still so high. 20 episodes, we've seen him grow so much. We've seen the cast as a whole grow so much. And this is just the starting point. That's what makes me excited for the future of Demon Slayer is that it can be fun, it can be badass, and show us things that feel so shown in anime, will at the very same time feel like we're watching incredible writing, both with the characters, the world, and the overall power mechanics, and the fact that characters actually get hurt, wounds, the consequences of their actions are actually seen and felt and carry over arc to arc, that's why this show is so phenomenal. If you haven't watched my video already, I already did a big video, a big analysis on Demon Slayer that I released earlier this week, Be be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Really proud of that video overall and the response has been great, but what did everyone think of episode 20 of Demon Slayer? The new characters, what did you think? Let me know, I'd love to read down that comment section below. If you did enjoy this video though, be sure to drop a like and also hit that subscribe button if you have been new. So until next time everyone, please take care, have a good one.